students today we going to discuss jee main 2025 questions from the chapter dual nature of radiation matter january attempt that is attempt number 1 so we divided this chapter into two parts today we going to see the second part suppose if you didn't watch the first part first part link is in the description do watch that video it will be easy for you and also we have a page in instagram and whatsapp channel do join in the channel to explore more regarding physics and to watch more video like this don't forget to subscribe our channel let us start the session we'll see the first question arrange the following in the ascending order of the wavelength to handle this question first we will write seven type of em wave first one is radio micro infra visible ultraviolet ray x ray and gamma so among the seven radio wave has a longest wavelength because of that only it can travel for larger distance and gamma has a shortest wavelength okay so they ask you to arrange in the form of ascending order so order will be in this direction okay so in option we don't have gamma so first one is x ray x ray has a shortest wavelength so lambda 4 is lesser than next one is ultraviolet so ultraviolet means lambda 2 and next is infra infra means lambda 3 and last one is microwave so microwave has a longest wavelength so lambda 1 so we can see this order in option 3 so option 3 is a right answer Next question: An electron of mass m with initial velocity v is equal to v naught i vector enters an electric field e is equal to minus e naught k vector. If initial de Broglie wavelength is lambda naught, the value after time t is. They ask de Broglie wavelength, so we can take the equation lambda is equal to h by p. They ask in the form of velocity, so we can expand momentum, that is mass into velocity. Okay. Now we'll see the question: An electron which has mass m and also it has an initial velocity v naught. enters an uniform electric field so whenever a charged particle enters a uniform electric field it will start to accelerate and to find the acceleration we have a formula in electrostatic chapter that is f is equal to qe that is equal to ma is it okay and to find the acceleration we can reform this formula so a is equal to in the place of q since it's a electron so we can substitute minus e e by m so this is acceleration okay and from this we can find the velocity also and if it starts to accelerate means surely the velocity will change so first we have to find the velocity at a particular time t so we can take equation of motion that is v is equal to u plus at okay so they have given the initial velocity u as v not i vector so v not i vector plus in the place of a we can substitute this so plus minus e and electric field is minus e not k vector so again minus e not k vector by mass m and time t okay so minus minus will get cancelled so balance v is equal to v not i vector plus e e not by m into p k vector okay so we need only the value we don't want vector so we're going to take square on both the sides so if you're taking square on both the sides means it's v square is equal to v not square Plus e square, e not square, t square by m square. Okay, we can take the square to the opposite side, so it will become root. Okay, now we can substitute in the de Broglie wavelength. So lambda is equal to h by m. In the place of v, we can substitute this. Okay, so that is square root of t not square plus e square, e not square. p square m square okay so i want to take v not outside so what i'm going to do is i'm going to multiply and divide by v not square in this format okay so what will happen v not square will be common and it will come out so we can write it as h by m v not balance 1 plus e square e not square p square by m square v not square okay so h by m v not this is a initial de broglie wavelength which is lambda not so we can write it as lambda not by root of 1 plus e square e square p square by m square v not square okay so we'll check the option option 1 is the right answer Next one, the energy of photon of wavelength lambda is e naught, which is equal to kinetic energy of proton of mass m p. 
So they compared photon and proton. So they are asking the ratio of de Broglie wavelength for proton and photon is. Okay, so first we will take the given data. First one is for proton. So second one is for photon. So what they have given is kinetic energy of proton and energy of photons are equal. Okay, so for proton is a particle. So we can take the de Broglie wavelength lambda is equal to h by square root of 2m kinetic energy. So here mass they have given it as mass of the proton. Okay, and for photon we need wavelength and energy. So we can take the formula E is equal to hc by lambda or else lambda is equal to hc by e. Okay, so this is for the proton and this is for the photon. For proton I am going to represent as lambda 1 and for photon lambda 2. Is it okay? Now we will take the ratio. So lambda 1 is equal to h by root of 2 mp kinetic energy. The kinetic energy of proton and energy of photons are equal. So I am going to substitute as E itself and lambda for the photon. Lambda 2 is equal to hc by E. Okay. Now we will take the ratio. hh will get cancelled. Balance lambda 1 by lambda 2 is equal to 1 by c. E will go to the numerator. So E by root of 2 mp into e. Okay. So I want to take the d inside. So I can write it as root e into root e. So root e root e will get cancelled. Balance 1 by c root of e. They have given it as e naught. So e naught by 2 mp. Okay. So check the option. Option 2 is the right answer. It's a theory question. Assertion and reason. First one. Emission of electrons in photoelectric effect can be suppressed by applying sufficiently negative electron potential to the photoemissive substance. So, negative electron potential means a stopping potential. Using stopping potential, you can control the photoelectric emission process. So, this statement is correct. For that reason, the negative electron potential which stops the emission of electrons from the surface of photosensitive sub, uh, substance varies linearly with frequency of incident variation. So what they are telling is the stopping potential increases linearly with frequency. So this is also a correct statement because we have seen a graph with respect to frequency and stopping potential. So the graph will be linear. Okay. So the reason is correct but it is not a correct explanation for the assertion. So option 4 is the right answer. Question in experiment with photoelectric effect the stopping potential is so we have to find the correct statement for the stopping potential. First one increases with increase in wavelength of incident light. So first we will write the equation. We know energy is equal to work function plus kinetic energy. They ask with respect to the wavelength. So we can write hc by lambda is equal to work function plus kinetic energy. So instead of kinetic energy we will write stopping potential. The kinetic energy is equal to q into vs. Okay. So if you are increasing the wavelength. The energy will decrease because of that kinetic energy will decrease. So, stopping potential also will decrease. So, if you are increasing the wavelength, the stopping potential will decrease. But in option 1, they have given increases. So, first option is wrong. That is incorrect. Coming to second one, uh, the stopping potential increases with increase in intensity of light. This is also incorrect statement because we have come across stopping potential is independent of intensity. Okay, so stopping potential is independent of intensity, depend only on frequency. So second condition is wrong. Third one is 1 by E times the maximum kinetic energy of emitted photoelectrons. So the, we have a formula with respect to kinetic energy stopping potential. Kinetic energy is equal to QVS. Instead of Q, we can substitute E. So kinetic energy is equal to EVS. That is stopping potential VS is equal to 1 by E times kinetic energy. So it's a correct statement. So option 3 is the right answer. Last question, the graph between wavelength of light and kinetic energy. So we'll compare with de Broglie wavelength. Lambda is equal to h by root of 2m kinetic energy. So we have to relate 1 by k with respect to lambda. So first we'll take square on both the sides. So lambda square is equal to h square by 2m kinetic energy that is Lambda square is directly proportional to 1 by k. Okay, it's x axis that is x square and this is y axis. So it's in the form of y is proportional to x square. That is in the place of y we have 1 by k. In the place of x we have lambda square. 
So for this quadratic equation, the graph is option 2. So option 2 is the right answer. Okay, students, we came to end of the session. If you have any doubts or queries regarding video, do comment in the comment box. And to watch more video like this, don't forget to subscribe our channel. Thank you, students.